Given the function f of x equals 108x minus x cubed and f prime of x equals 108 minus 3x squared, select the local maxima and minima of f of x. Now remember, we can use calculus to zero in on the coordinates of, of a local max or a local min of even a pretty complicated function. This is a cubic polynomial. Let me just show you a rough sketch of the graph of f of x. See, here's the basic curve, and then this is a local max. This is a local maximum, and this is a local minimum. And earlier in the course, whenever we studied polynomial functions, we didn't have a good way to find these really important points in a graph. We could find the x-intercepts, where the graph crosses the x-axis, and we could find the y-intercepts, where it crosses the y-axis, but we really couldn't find these points. The only way we did it was we used a calculator. But with calculus, you can find the points, the exact coordinates, without a calculator. And the way it works is you use the derivative. f prime of x is the derivative function of f of x. And then remember, the derivative is a formula for the instantaneous rate of change between the variables of f of x. And since this is a complicated function, the rate isn't always the same. It's not like a linear function where the rate is, stays the same all the time. This rate changes, and so that's why there's a formula, there's a function for the rate. And if you want to know the rate of change for a specific value of x, you just plug this in and, and you can calculate it. Now, on the graph of the function, the derivative shows up as the slope of the curve at any point. And the slope is changing all the time as you go from point to point. See, in this section of the curve, the slope is negative since the curve is going downward. But it's not exactly the same because, see, it's kind of curving a little bit downward. Then through this section, the, the slope is positive since the curve is going up, but it's also changing from point to point. And then from here on, it's negative. And so if you want to know the slope of this curve at a certain point, maybe this point right here, you just look at the x-coordinate of that point, whatever it is, plug that in to f prime of x, and you can calculate the slope. Now, the slope of the curve at the local max and local min is always equal to zero. And then one good way to, to see the slope of a curve at a point is to run a tangent line to the curve at that point. When we do that here, you see that the tangent line is horizontal for both the local max and the local min, and you know that a horizontal line always has a slope of zero. Well, that just shows that the slope of the curve at these points is equal to zero. And here's how we're going to use that that information. These are the points that we want the coordinates of, and we know that the slope is zero, and so we can set the derivative equal to zero, and then when we solve this equation, we'll find the x values where the slope is zero, and those are going to be the x coordinates of these two points, because all the other points don't have a slope of zero. And it makes sense that this is a quadratic equation. It's going to probably have two answers, and so one will be the x coordinate of this point, and the other answer will be the x coordinate of of this other point, the local min. The first step in solving this is I'm going to move the negative 3x squared over to the right side, and then I might as well just flip the whole equation around since we're used to having the x term on the left and the number on the right. It doesn't really matter mathematically, but I'm just used to seeing it that way. And then now we need to divide both sides by 3. That gives us x squared equals 36, and then the last step is to take the square root of both sides. There are two square roots to 36, a positive and a negative, and so that gives us x equals 6 and x equals negative 6. These are the x-coordinates of the local max and the local min. Now to find the y-coordinates, it's actually not too tough. All we have to do is substitute each of these numbers in for x in the original function f of x, and we'll find the matching y values that way. When you put negative 6 in for x here in f of x, it gives us this. And then when you simplify, the value for y comes out to negative 432. And so when x equals negative 6, y equals negative 432. And substituting positive 6 in for x in f of x gives us this. And then simplifying, we end up with positive 432. So when x equals 6, y equals positive 432. Now let's go back to the graph. This point right here is in 
x negative x territory, it's to the left of the origin, and then it's below the x-axis, so it's a negative y territory also. So the coordinates of this point must be negative 6, negative 432. And then the coordinates of this point must be positive 6, positive 432, because this is going to have a positive x value and a positive y value. And see, we were able to get a just a rough, I didn't go through the process, but we were able to get a rough graph of this just using the the techniques that that we went over in the early part of the course, but there was no way we were anywhere close to being able to get these exact coordinates. We needed calculus for that. We would have had to use a calculator before we learned about how to, how to work with derivatives. Here's what we got. This is our max, our local max, and this is our local min. And if you run through the original choices we were given, this is the correct choice down here on bottom. And so choice E is the answer to problem.